Hello and welcome to the 89th episode of Strawberry Patches Podcast. My name is Marina and I'm coming to you from this beautiful uh, park, Lake Pupuke here in Auckland, New Zealand. And um, this podcast is mainly about crafts and um, knitting, yarn dyeing, spinning and all the things that I'm up to. And sometimes I show you a little bit about my life here in New Zealand because I'm actually not from here, I'm from Russia. But if you have been here for a while, you know that I love traveling and that's my mom. <laughs> it's her last day here in New Zealand, so she's. I'm taking her out to see some black swans, which I will show you in a bit. They're over there. And I thought I'd... Um, I'll show you a little bit of that. There is a very nice cafe there, which is called the French Rendezvous, which I think we're gonna go and have some pancakes in. And yeah, when I get home, I'm going to show you a little bit of my spinning, um, a very exciting news about a new mystery fiber club, and yeah other projects that I've finished and by the way I'm wearing my Comfort Fade Cardigal which is a pattern by Andrea Maury in my hand dyed yarn here are these beautiful black swans so come join me Welcome, dear friends, to my little crafty space. My name is Marina and I welcome you today from a beautifully sunny Auckland, New Zealand. And I have so much to share with you. It's been a while. The last episode I filmed was way back in, Mar in February. Now it's the 11th of March. And I have, as you can see, tons of things to show you. So welcome, welcome to everybody new. This podcast is about um, yarn dyeing, hand spinning, making some things with hand spun yarn and making some toys and socks and things, knitting, very occasionally crochet and what else did I forget? Spinning and talking about fiber in New Zealand because that's where I am. Today I will talk about some exciting shop news at the end of this video. I will share with you some of my personal news. Uh, again, maybe, I don't know where I will show you, but share with you, but I have a ton of things to show you. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. I hope you in will enjoy this program very much because I'm so excited to share Oh yes, I have exciting new product coming up that I really, really want to share with you. And uh, yeah, let's start. Um, I hope you have something to drink. I have just warm water because I know I will be talking a lot, so I need something to soothe my throat. And this is our beautiful Pahutukawa flower here, very kiwi style. <laughs> Okay, so as you know, last weekend uh, I was at the Pukekoe Spin-In together with 
some of my friends and we made a little wee video with Kylie, who is uh, half of the wonderful podcast, um, a, tea, a Cup of Tea and Yarn. She's usually with Jill, but she was very um, friendly and she invited me over. And if you haven't watched that video, please go and check out what we were talking about there. And today I will share with you what I've been up to in the meantime. So, um, yeah, a little bit of what's been going on in the last month. Well, I have had my big birthday. I turned 40 and luckily my mom was still here and she's left already, but she was here for my birthday and she's made this wonderful uh, poster on the wall with uh, all of their she traced their hands and she put them on the wall and uh, it was so lovely to wake up to that surprise and uh, it was lovely to celebrate with my family. We had this beautiful big cake that I will have some pictures of. And February was a busy month because there was a spin together happening, which was an event, global event. I will talk about it in a bit. Also, I have dyed a ton of fiber and I have partnered up with Alana and um, yeah, why not? Let's share that now. So I, my very good friend Alana, who has a shop in Parnell, which is called the Lupine and Wilco, and she's offered me to um, sell my fiber there. And I did drop off 10 braids at her shop. And uh, I have a picture of that, of all of the beautiful fiber on her counter. And yeah, now you can squish some of the strawberry patches fiber in person when you come and visit Auckland or if you are local. Yeah, because I've been getting requests about if there is any physical location that people can uh, see my yarns and fiber. Well, not the yarns, but fiber, yes. I'm very excited about that and also I've been working on a very very exciting project for me it's the recipe book monthly fiber club and I will talk about it in a bit so let's go back into the usual order which is the finished objects first then the works in progress and then the rest I have only how many four finished projects for you and I'm very, very pleased with the biggest of them all. And this is the Yacardi by Nadia Cretin Lachen. Oh, look at this. I have finished, this is my hand spun yarn, which is the Corydale and Silk from Anna Gretton. And I made this cardigan for my youngest daughter who already tried it on. And I have some really cute pictures. And I made it a bigger size, a little bit bigger, because she's two and three months now, and she's growing very fast. So I think this will fit her during our winter, which is coming. And I think this is about size three. I really loved working on these beautiful increases, raglan increases here. And this was this is such a fine detail this <clears throat> rolled hem that i thought was at first was a uh, applied eye cord which would have taken ages to do but no this cardigan is a very very i would say easy to make because all you do is you just knit in garter all the time except for this wee detail which is very easy very easy and and then after you have done a few rows of stockinette, which rolls on itself and makes this beautiful curled bun, you pick up the stitches along here and you just knit and purl. Again, stockinette, and this is how you create this beautiful finish. I also used up some of the buttons that I was gifted by lovely Jill for Christmas. And I love these wee pockets which all the girls love pockets. So here we are. This is this beautiful cardigan I'm very pleased with. 
I really enjoyed knitting with my hand spun yarn and I used about 220 gram or something like that, which is very good use of my hand spun yarn. I will talk more about hand spinning because as I said, there was a spin together. Now, on to some more finished objects. I have finished these stripy socks which are using some of the yarn I got at the Woolfest last year from Mrs. Peacock. And I used the contrast mini that she had, I mean, I bought for this part, but you can't really see that it's contrast because the socks started uh, with the same color. So I decided to use another contrast for the heels and toes so that it's a bit more contrasty. And I finished these and I made them a little bit too short because I used the afterthought heel method and I did the same amount of rows as I did in the previous socks which were a sock tube and apparently the row gauge must be different so these are a bit too short they might get a be they might be a present now i'm also still in love with making little clothes for these guys which are the knitted toys from the beautiful well not this one they are the animals that are designed by cynthia valley this is giorgio that you have seen already and he has got new pants today i'm working on some little clothes because every easter i have this tradition for it's going to be third year i think now that my daughters get, um, first they would get a bunny and then they would get some new clothes for their bunny. So I made some pants because all of the animals that they're playing with, they have lots of outfits, but not so many pants. So I made this cute wee pants with a hole for the tail and it's in a sort of like a ribbing. And this is the Union Fiber mini skein that I got from Bonnie. Then I also used the raccoon pattern. Here's the raccoon to make up this dress. So I got the idea from dear Helen from the uh, Marcy Makes podcast. She's knitted this top uh, following the pattern for the raccoon's jumper and then she just knit straight. That's what I did. And yeah, this will be a dress for a little Odile for Easter. And I think for my youngest daughter, I'm going to make, um, so I made the pants and I will probably do a short, sweet jumper. I think, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And I also made some socks that I haven't shown them yet. And uh, I will um, do that as well. So as you can see, I'm still in love with making these wee animals. And I think very soon I will be making more animals and more clothes for them. That's all my finished objects. Now let's go right into the works in progress. The biggest work in progress that I have to show you is this humongous habitation throw by Helen Stewart. It's a pattern by Helen Stewart. It's made by me. <laughs> and this is using all of my hand dyed yarns from way, way back when I started. So this, for example, one is I, I dyed on my 34th birthday six years ago uh, one of my very first hand dyed yarns and there's more that I just put together randomly into this big throw and uh, this is where I was last time I haven't done much but you understand why because I've been knitting on the Yacardi and I've been dying and spinning a lot so slowly but surely we are making progress. I think I might wear it for a while because it's so pretty. And my daughter's, well, my youngest, she loves colors. She's in that stage when she's learning colors. So she would sometimes say to me, mama, I want this. And that means that she wants to take me. She wants me to take it out and she will be showing me all the colors. It's funny that she's mixing up red and green. I'm wondering if she's um, mixing up those colors, she's, if she's colorblind, but not always. So I'm still hopeful that she can see all the colors. 
now it's too hot <laughs> so this is my first humongous whip the other whip that i have is i custom some socks for on my birthday because i like doing that i like my uh, birthday to have some sort of cast on and this time i am using some of the leftovers this is leftover yarn from bonnie and this is one of the mini skeins from caroline from the yeye yarn that i threw in this is some al not alpaca what was it it's the name the alpaca look inside alpacas uh dyed merino and silk I used for the beginning of the sock and then as you can see one two three and four this is the fourth not much happening here I need to do a toe and cast on another sock so this will be the next pair of socks that I will make and I'm excited about it because making socks has always been my happy place and yes, this beautiful bag. I keep talking about it, but it's made for my good friend Evgenia and uh, she's made another bag for me, which I am looking forward to seeing. It's in the mail somewhere. Another, oh, two more, two more I have. So my Travel a Cow by Andre Maori, the pattern by Andre Maori has grown, but just a little bit, not much. It will go like this. Oh, I love these colors. It's going to be so pretty. And yeah, again, my hand spun, which is alpaca and merino. Really nice and bouncy yarn and so, so squishy. And not last but i have finished the yoke on my calypso sweater which is a super um smart and beautiful pattern by alana alana pink my friend from the lupine um wool shop but also her company the design company is called the black cat knit knitting company here it is again my hand spun lavender feels i think I think it's lavender fields and some Rowan felt a tweet for the body and I have finished the yoke and started the body but I tried it on and it's a little bit too big so I'm going to see Alana on Thursday and uh, we'll figure out if I need to undo it and maybe pick up less stitches for the sleeves here we will see what's going to happen but I'm very very excited about this sweater I think it's going to be my wool fest sweater I'm very excited to wear it. My color war is not perfect, but I really enjoyed it. And I think I will give it a good blow, block. And I'm really, really looking forward to making more color work sweaters. And the last cast on that actually happened last night was this. So as you know, um, might know. Andre Maori, the designer behind this travel cowl and the other beautiful patterns that I love. She's having a March to May knit along at the moment and usually I, well for the past, this is going to be third year that I did it during this time. Uh, last year I made the so faded kind of a tee. It was a short uh, tea that I wore for Woolfest. It was blue and a little bit faded. And this time I decided to make myself a comfort fade cardigan. So before I jump into this, when my mom was leaving, I gifted her my, uh, what's it called, lotus top, which I needed for myself when I was pregnant. And it is this beautiful lime green colors. She says it's lime yellow, but I think it's lime green. So she tried it on, it's too big for me, and she tried it on and it fit perfectly for her. Here's a picture of my beautiful mom. And I said, okay, well, it's yours now. She was very happy about it because the colors suit her, but I really wanted something like these colors in my wardrobe. So I went and I dyed lots of this color and I'm making myself a comfort fade cardigan number three. I made uh, my 
bluish one and then I made a blue gray one for my sister and this is the third one for me and oh my god I love this pattern because it's super fun to make because you get to do all the striping and changing colors but also it knits up super fast this is what I did last night and normally this pattern has the pearls to be the right side but I usually prefer the knit stitch to be my right side we shall see what I do for this one maybe I will do the opposite for this one but I have dyed some of the my favorite base that is sadly the skeins don't sell it anymore it's the DK Way Twist on Twist Merino New Zealand Merino and I have dyed sort of like a fade, but it, you, I don't know if you can even see that there is, it's a very subtle fade. Here we go. I think it will go like this. And I'm very excited. I figured out the recipe to make this color and I will add, be adding it to the shop as well because I just think it's super trendy at the moment and I can't wait to wear these colors. I might have them on top of my Calypso for Wolfest. I'm not decided whether I am going to wear this or the other. Depends on how hot it is. But it's always good to have a cardigan because you can open it up, you can close it, and yeah, and be toasty. Right. So this is my last work in progress, you guys. And um, before I tell you all about my acquisitions and my spinning and my dyeing and shop news, I'm so excited to tell you about the new Mystery Fiber Club that I started. So the um, pre-order started now in March and this is for the Fiber Club that will be sent on in April. Um, I had this idea that I want to bring a surprise fiber to you guys each month and it will be united by this idea of a recipe book. I have this recipe book that I have been jotting the recipes that I love into and I love this book because it has all these recipes that are not just recipes but memories of all the people that I met that made these beautiful desserts or dishes that I jotted down and that I've been cooking for my family. For example, I have some recipes from my father of some really nice pancakes. I have recipes from my mom. I have the recipe of the dough from my grandma who has it from her grand from her ma, so my great grandma. I also have some recipes from my friends in Turkey. I have recipes for my like probably the recipe that I've done the most is the banana bread that I got from an Aussie friend back when I was working on a boat in Marmaris in 2008, I think. I was working on a boat, yes, you guys. I worked on a boat in Marmaris and we had this lovely Australian family and one of these girls, she gave me the recipe for this amazing banana bread, which I make, everybody loves, and I, I should make some more. So the recipe book um, Fiber Club, is monthly Fiber Club, is going to be a box full of surprises for you guys. And each month there will be a theme. So for example, um, one ingredient of a recipe, it will be dyed in, it, uh, the recipe will inspire the fiber and some goodies will be uh, related to that recipe or crafts. So it can be maybe stitch markers, labels, uh, yarny thingies, fiber thingies. So I don't want to give too much away and I'm not even showing you the box, which I already have, I already started dyeing the fiber. And I decided that my capacity is about 10 boxes a month and there is only six left because one of them I'm going to give away as a prize. So if you really, really want to uh, get this fiber box, head over to my web shop and it's the strawberrypatches.nz. But if you want to try your luck and win it, go to my Instagram and find the giveaway post. 
the rules are simple. You just have to tag your friends, like the post, follow me, and for extra entries, you can share it on your stories. And I will be sending you one of the boxes of this recipe book, Monthly Fiber Club, for free. Isn't that great news? Bonus to that, I'm having an Easter sale on my website, which is some of the yarns that, in my mind, Easter has always been spring related. So I picked up some bright colors that are on sale right now during the whole month of March until Easter, which is the 31st of March this year. And yeah, go on there and see if you like any of those. And um, let's cast on some bright projects with you guys. Like, see, I'm full mode, spring mode. Even though it's autumn here, I'm quite aware that this is autumn here in New Zealand. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you about this beautiful project bag made by Danny. How beautiful is that? I think it perfectly matches the yarn that's inside. So Danny is another podcaster in Australia and she has an Etsy shop where she sells her beautiful handmade bags and it's called a knitted suitcase. And okay, that's all the exciting news that I have from my shop. Um, I will show you a bit more of the fiber that I have in the shop at the moment. But before then, what should I tell you about first? Yes, now I think I'll show you the spin. I'll talk about the spin together. Um, I'm going to talk about the spin together competition. Yes, it was a competition that was um, happening worldwide. Mostly, as far as I understood, the teams were based in America, in the United States. There was one team called New Zealand and uh, maybe the rest of the world because one of the people from the New Zealand team was from the UK and a couple were from the States and maybe somebody from Australia, I'm not sure. But I really wanted to participate and I was unlucky that the places in my New Zealand team were taken. So I picked randomly um, a team which I liked the name of, which was the Grandma Spinning Wheel. Because I just love the idea of Grandma passing on her wheel to her grandchildren. And um, so I joined that team and I... Um, it started on the day that I was celebrating my birthday and I started a little bit late, but I've done good progress. Uh, here is a little video of the yarns that I have spun. So here is the fiber that I spun during the spin together and I was spinning this under the sea New Zealand Corridale and Island blend that I dyed myself. I had only 50 gram of that little guy and I really liked and wanted to spin it. Then I had this present from Bonnie from Union Fiber and I purchased this one from her, which is another sock uh, Corridale and Nylon blend. And I have spun it into this, oh, look at this. I've spun it into this really round and bouncy yarn, <clears throat> which I love. And now I'm thinking that it's so pretty that it probably won't be in the in the socks it might get um into a yoke or somewhere else look how generous bonnie is with her skeins fiber this one she said was cordial and silk and it was also very moody and beautiful colors which are not my usual thing but i loved spinning this thing i also spun about 200 gram of the lollipop sprinkles and um it's already washed. First I put the tag on, not very professional, but <laughs> um, it works. I washed it and this is what I've spun during this pin together. On the screen, I'll show you how many grams or yards I spun total. In grams, it's about 200, 320, 370, and this one is about 50. So over 400 gram I spun during one week. Then I didn't stop there. I really loved this blend, which is 
it's, it's not, well, it is a blend. It's the Spearmint, which is a 29 micron Corydale machine washable. And I spun six, no, not six, 500 gram of this one. And since I spun it during <clears throat> just watching videos and all, it's not very consistent. And I have already caked this one and made a swatch. Oh, it's a whole story about what I'm going to do with this whole thing because I made it bulky, well, iron weight. So we're going to figure out what I'm going to make with it. It might be a cardigan or something with, um, what's it called? Oh my God, cables. <laughs> and yes, I'm using these cool needle stoppers. Right. And this is how I mark that this is needles, five millimeter needles, one, two, three, four, five bumps. So yeah, really enjoyed spinning this fiber. And I really want a whole garment thing out of it. It's a bit more green than you can see here. As you can see, I worked quite hard, even though that week was quite busy with the two kids and my mom who had her last weeks here in Auckland and we were traveling quite a bit. I was taking her here and there and I still managed to spin quite a bit. I'm quite happy about that. But I have to say that I was a bit sad with my experience because the team that I joined, they had organized a cast, well not custom, uh, they started spinning in their shop in the States, which was first of all the next day for me, and it was offline, so I wasn't even able to join them. Luckily, my New Zealand uh, team friends, they um, shared their password and I was able to join them on Zoom there a couple of times. So in that sense, it was some togetherness in the spin together part. But unfortunately, I, apart from a few emails, I didn't even feel like a part of the grandma spinning wheel team. And I do understand that uh, one of the team captains had her um, surgery done and she had some emergencies with health and all that, but it felt a bit lonely uh, to be in the spin together and to spin on my own. Uh, but I guess they, um, I did submit my pictures and the yardage anyway, because it's a team competition and every member is supposed to, uh, in this week period and after that, it's supposed to count your yardage and submit the amount that you have spun and the, the device that you spun on. So I spun on my little gem by Magicraft, my beautiful wheel. And so apparently that team, inside the team, they drew the prizes and I have won, funny enough, there was a category of the, the spinner who was the, the farthest spinner, I think that's what it's called. Like I was the, the spinner from far away or something. So yeah, that was very generous of them to offer me a prize. And um, again, unfortunately, I can't even access their website because I think it's not, um, it's in their settings that New Zealand people cannot access these American websites. So I couldn't even choose the prize, but luckily, the uh, I think Vicky and Cassandra are coming to New Zealand in April, so I'm going to be able to meet with them. And they offered very kindly to bring some of the undyed fiber that I uh, they're dying. So I think there will be an episode about that as well. So on the whole, of course I wish that I was I felt more like part of that team, but on the whole. Um, very excited about taking part in this competition, kind of setting some goals for myself. I wanted to spin a little bit more than I spun, but I did not want to make this like 
a prime thing. I didn't want to put my family on hold while I do this spinning. So I'm quite happy with my results and also I'm quite happy that I was able to do Zoom with my New Zealand friends that I had this communication and connection with this um, grandma spinning wheel people and I'm looking forward to meeting them and maybe showing them a little bit, telling them more a little bit about New Zealand fibers and um, yarns. So yeah, that will be exciting. I think I will do it again next year, but I probably will be trying to get into the New Zealand team. Uh, we shall see how it goes, but this was a very fun experience for me. And now I would like to share with you some of the acquisitions that I have collected since the last time I recorded. Because last time I recorded well, a proper podcast, I had some things coming in the mail and finally they arrived and it was my birthday month so i thought oh well you know marina of course you have lots of yarn but i knew that my family um they're really generous and they just say whatever you want like just tell us and we will gift it to you so that's what we did my lovely lovely sister she as last year i asked her to gift me this uh nomadic yarns self-striping sock skein which is all the way from Canada so it traveled from Canada to my sister in Massachusetts and now to New Zealand and this time it's the superwash BFL in linen, nylon and I can't wait to make some beautiful stripy socks out of this gorgeous 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 I think it's six or seven colors oh it's quite pricey this yarn but I know how much work goes into making these so I really think it's worth it then I also was on the hunt for some New Zealand dyer who is a darn neat New Zealand. And uh, I met her once at the Woolfest in 2018. And unfortunately, since then, she hasn't come to our Woolfest. And I wasn't able to get any more except for from people who were destashing. So this time I got some. But first, I found this from one of the people who was destashing and I thought, oh, this must be some self-striping sock yarn, which is not really my colors, but for socks I don't mind, but I contacted uh, the dyer and she said, if it says Merino, it doesn't say nylon, it's not sock yarn. And if it doesn't say self-striping, it's not self-striping. <laughs> oh, well, I think it will still dye into, I mean, knit into some fun, maybe, stripy cardigan or maybe a hat i can see myself maybe some slip stitch color work on a neutral body or a fun hat maybe then i also had this isn't sock yarn this will become some socks and then another lovely viewer lynette who is watching me from new zealand she has We've been contacting each other and she graciously uh, offered to sell her, some of her stash, which is also darn it New Zealand. All this, she said that this is one of her earliest uh, cakes. And I bought this wonderful DK weight uh, cakes. It's so beautiful that they're already in the form of cakes. I'm planning to make an anchor's sweater for my daughter. This might be a hat and this I'm planning to make an anchors and it will start from the pink and the yoke will be in pink probably, the body will be grey and at the end if I still need more it will be blue. Hence this is why I dyed some of my Mira colorway which I think is somewhat matchy and yeah this will be the sleeves. So I'm really looking forward to this the, um, knitting with this New Zealand Merino yarns. And also, oh, this has, this is like gold. It's so hard to find and I'm super stoked that I found these two 50 gram sock gradients, which is the passion fruit, um, again from Darnit New Zealand. Oh, 
I'm so looking forward to knitting this because I made the stro no, strawberry, no watermelon, a uh, watermelon uh, cake into this uh, top for Lydia and she loves it and she's still gonna probably wear it this year, although she's been wearing it for two winters already. So yes, this will be more socks, exciting. Also, I treated myself to some yarn from Ye Ye Yan, the wonderful uh, Indie Daya from, where is she from? Hmm. New Zealand, for sure. I'm not sure where. Um, so before my birthday, I checked her website and she had these updates and I saw this which colorway called Aquarius. I'm like, yeah, I'm an Aquarius, so I'm going to be 40 and I want this for my birthday. So of course I couldn't just order one because I wanted to get my hands on some more of her surreal, which is the alpaca, brushed baby suri and silk, 50 gram, 300 meters. I have no idea what I'm going to do with this beautiful, gorgeous yarn, but as you can see, it kind of, yeah, uh, this will definitely be socks because it's the sparkle sock in the dance party. Yes, dance party. And I just wanted some really funky bright colors for my feet. And these two, they might go together. I think they would go together well or not. I don't know. I might pair this with some maybe purple that I dye myself and make a nice hat because this will make really really nice and warm hat. I haven't decided yet but I'm very happy to have some more Yi Yan in my stash, in my collection. Also I have um, I have been waiting for this and in the meantime what do you do you look for more yarn that's what i did so i got my hands on some of the sock yarn again from someone actually this person had this and along with this i thought oh well you know what throw in the fiber lily which is an australian uh, dyer and because it has winter i mean lily in the name i was like oh yes me like that that's another sock yarn which has 15% nylon and 85% extra fine Australian merino, which may be a bit too fancy for socks, but we shall see when I wind up the cake, I will have a bit of more of an idea what it will knit up. But I just love all these bright colors. I never dye this combination, so I thought it would be fun. And then I also went for some really I thought fun sort of self-striping uh, sock yarns, which is West Yorkshire Spinner's signature and the Veramoda Not Just Socks, because it might it's going to knit up into this self-striping, self-patterning sock, and I think it would be fun to make. Also, I really wanted to try this bamboo superb bamboo superwash, which has 25% viscose, and I think that's from bamboo. 50% virgin wool, 25 polyamide, which will make for sturdy socks. And these are not my favorite colors, but I really wanted uh, to see how this would knit up. And some bamboo would probably make them a bit more appropriate for summers. My husband would probably like these ones. So, Yes, I have one more purchase, but it's coming uh, to me in the mail. This is a bag from Eugenia. And now I want to show you some of the fiber that I got from the lovely Anna Gratton from our Puke, Pukekoi Spin In that I went to last week. I'm going to flip the camera and show it to you. It's over there <laughs> on the couch. I just thought it would be uh, much better to show it to you there. Here are my purchases from Anna Gratton, and I did tell you in my previous <laughs> little episode with Kylie that I buy, bought a lot, but you have no idea. This is not even half of that. 
Most of it is undyed fiber, which I'm going to dye and then show you. In the meantime, let me show you this beauty. So this is the lavender fields, which I spun already and I loved it, but this one is dyed on a gray base. That's why it's a little bit more moody and I loved it. Then I loved spinning the lollipop sprinkles. So I dyed up some, I, I bought some more of this fiber and I might do a lovely cardigan for myself or for my daughters. I have this aqua corifis uh, that I bought before and I bought some more, but this one is a little bit lighter. So I might do some ply, trick plying or something. Then I also bought two of these. I loved spinning these guys and I want to make more. And these are the blue rayon spots, which she used in her, uh, what's it called? It's uh, basically a white Corydale blended with these and it's more white. So she said that, yeah, I could also do that. Just get some white Corydale and blend it in. And uh, I'm waiting for my drum carter to come to do some blending. So here are my little fiber purchases. Now I'll show you what else I have. Yes, these are all my acquisitions. As you can see, uh, it's my birthday month. What, I can, what can I do? I really felt like I deserved. I think I'm going to chill for the rest of the year. Yeah, because I definitely have enough fiber and wool to dye any color I want. And um, I have all these plans for dyeing the monthly fiber clubs. So yeah, I've been busy. And yeah, that's what I did. Also, speaking of uh, places where you can squish uh, some of the strawberry patches yarns is, again, I'm reminding you, you that on the 25th of August, oh, sorry, May, 25th of May, 2024, we're going to have amazing 10th, celebrating 10 years wool fest where I will be trading as strawberry patches, yarns, and fiber. And of course, I'm going to have some fiber this year with for you guys and some stitch holders, not stitch holders, what are they called? Needle stoppers. Where are they? Well, like these ones. I'm going to have these guys there and I really, really hope that you will come and see me there. Also, just come and see all the ama amazing makers and crafters here in New Zealand who will be traveling all the way to Auckland to the amazing Kumeo Showgrounds, which is a huge space with a paddock at the back with sheep and lots of food trucks, plenty of parking spaces and lots of friendly people. And last year when I went, I really enjoyed meeting and uh, talking to people wearing their hand knits and I do have an episode about that if you're really curious I took Lily with me and this time I think I will leave my kids and husband behind and just do I'll concentrate on meeting you guys please come up to me and show me your makes and strawberry patches yarns I'll be really excited to see them and yeah looking forward to meeting you guys or seeing you again so Here's what I have at the shop at the moment. I have this lovely merino and linen blend, which is so, so lovely because it's 21 micron New Zealand merino and 15% linen. And I felt like dyeing them in the blues, as you can see, after a a phase of pinks and yellows I, and oranges I wanted to go back to my usual colors which are these lovely blues this fiber is in the shop it's called the sky fiber next to it is ice ice baby and these oh I love these um, this fiber is also New Zealand merino and it is the black gray white merino with lyocell which is a cellulose fiber which means it's um, it doesn't die and it gives this really lovely sheen it's 
beautiful like silk but it's not silk and it's perfect for spinning and felting because it felts and it's not super wash treated this lovely one is forget me nots and this one is blueberry as you know i love berries so most of my fibers is somehow associated with berries next to it is mulberries which is a, uh, it's dyed on a natural gray Corydale. so these ones are merino this is a gray you can see a little bit of here mulberries i really love how this one turned out look at this beautiful sort of pink and purples i love it and a little bit of yarn here this is the mirror colorway on dk base it's not in the shop yet but maybe by the time you're watching i will put it up and this one is the dk sock which has some stellina as you can see and i dyed it in this beautiful lime not as lime as my as something that i'm knitting right now but just for comparison here is the one i'm using for my cardigan and this is the lime that's going to be in the shop so i hope you like them and i hope you will want to spin or knit with them this is so lovely i'm really looking forward to dyeing up some of the gray bases as well to get more muted colors for those of you who don't like super bright colors that i love um and some more life update, if you wish. I mm, I need something in my hands to play with. Just recently, I've been watching Kylie and Jill talking about their um, lovely trip to Dunedin, where they were at the Unwind Retreat. And they were talking about how uh, us knitters are fidgety people and how we like to fidget with stuff and I realized that I'm like that the other day after I've done all that spinning I had this pain in my muscle here and I I was so upset because I can't watch a movie and not knit or not spin or not crochet or not do something I really need something in my hands and I was so upset that I just went to bed at eight o'clock because yeah um so it was a lovely episode. Kylie and Jill, I really enjoyed watching you talk about all the amazing speakers that you've listened to, all the purchases that you made, all the makers that you supported. And I do encourage you, if you are outside New Zealand, or even if you are New Zealand, go check out these lovely friends of mine and um, see their video, latest video about the Unwind Retreat. And what I'm going to do today, today is a very special day for me because on this day, 11th of March, 2024, I'm going to be attending a citizenship ceremony. After six years of living here in New Zealand, I'm going to become a New Zealand um, citizen. There will be a ceremony and I will make an oath. And after that, I'll be officially the last person in our family to get a Kiwi passport. My daughters already were born here. My husband has already gotten his New Zealand, New Zealand citizenship and I'm the last one to get it. And I'm really excited. I wish they were coming with me, but it's a bit late. So they will be probably sleeping by the time I go through all of that, but yay, exciting for me. So as you can see, I've been super excited about everything. I am super stoked about the spinning that I've done in February. Oh, this is just so lovely. I can't wait to start more um, projects that will be using my hand spun yarn. I'm definitely going to take part in the Spin It to Knit It by Andrea Maori. And uh, I think my first entry will be her the Travel with Cow and I'll probably be making more cows or I should definitely make a hand spun cardigan or sweater. Definitely. Thank you so much for um, sticking around with me for a whole hour. 
I really appreciate that. I hope you've been inspired to make something bright or to start make to start making some clothes or Easter bunnies for Easter for your friends or your kids. Um, I do hope that you are a spinner and that you would like to check out my fiber either in my online shop or in person. And yeah, I'll see you very soon. Thanks for watching and uh, commenting. I'm always, I love reading your comments. So always please do write something about what you're making or what you enjoyed from this podcast. I'd love hearing from you guys. So take care. Matiwa. Bye-bye.